and we welcome those who are uh, worshiping with us live stream this morning. I may be a little uh, not feeling 100% prepared because this is my first draft today. I didn't get to preach at Osage this morning because we had brunch and celebrated their stewardship Sunday, and so you you get all of the flubs that I make today. Um, for announcements, though, today we do have um, one thing on the calendar, which is next Sunday. It's our mission pledge offering, along with communion. Did I just put out there? I'm cutting out. I'm going to have to scream. And uh, that's about it. State volleyball tournament this week, so if you uh, are able to watch or go, that starts Tuesday. And um, I was told on Thursday during coffee hour that I made the Globe Gazette for cheering, and I said, really? <laughs> Why am I in the Globe Gazette? And Dean and, or Jean and Della were like, well, Dixie, you're right there on the front page. And sure enough, there I was next to Susie, though you really couldn't see Susie because she was next to me behind someone else. So anyway, um, also next Sunday between 8.30 and 12.30, so before you come to worship next week, you could go and get a dabbed Belgian waffles, all you can eat, at Sacred Heart Parish Hall in Osage. It's nine dollars and it's dine in or carry out so if you're interested that is happening next sunday are there other announcements oh we do have a meeting after worship today with session and trustees and cemetery and anybody else who would like to be nominated to be on any of those boards you can stay because we are in that process of nomination for next year and uh, so we're going to probably be looking for some volunteers or if you're happy with how things are going, people may have to just stay on the boards. <laughs> That's how it works, right? All right, those are my announcements. So let us turn to why we're here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for all who are able, you please stand and join me in our call to worship. Hear, O people of God. Hear the commandments of our God. First, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Hear, O people of God, our God is one. Recite the commandments to your children and hold them in your hearts. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. And so let us remain standing and join in our opening hymn, A Mighty, Mighty Fortress is Our God, which is hymn number 43.
reconciled to the community of faith and to the world, and let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, that we have not loved you with all our heart and soul, with all our mind and strength, and that we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We beseech thee, O God, to forgive what we have been, to help us to amend what we are, and of your mercy to direct what we shall be, so that we may walk in the way of your commandments and do those things which are pleasing in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be comforted and hear the good tidings of the gospel. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the pacification for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Believe the gospel and live in peace. Amen. and two sons. 
The name of the man was Elamet, Elamaic, and the name of the wife, Naomi, and the names of the two sons were Malan and Shilan. They were, mm -hmm. they were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elamaic, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with two of her two sons. Yeah. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malan and Chilin also died. So that the woman was left without her two sons, and her husband. And then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as he, you have dealt with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. And then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband, even if I thought there was hope for me. Even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you. Because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. And may the Lord do this, and so to me, and more as well. If even death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. And let us pray. Holy and gracious spirit, we thank you for coming into this worship space this morning and filling our breath and our ears and our mouths with your love and with your holy presence. Fill our ears and our hearts and our minds with your message you have for us today, and Lord, I ask. May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Clinging to someone. Where you go, I will go. That was the image that I have been kind of pondering since about Thursday or Friday of this last week, thinking about when I was a child, I clung to my parents. And most of you can relate to that. When you were children, that's who you clung to. Where they went, you went, because they didn't, you didn't want to be left behind, you didn't want to be lost. But I have to tell you a story that will probably embarrass my parents, because they watch this every single week, not live stream, but they watch the recorded version. When I was born, our trip, family vacation, was a day or two at Adventureland in Des Moines. And I don't recall the story because I was a baby. I was probably about six or nine months old. And later in life, they tell me this. 
And I'm like, really? So they run on the log ride, and Mom had a baby carriage, and I was in that baby carriage, but of course she took me with her, because otherwise I would have been gone, because when they got off the baby carriage, her baby bag and the carriage was missing. It was gone. And so when they told me this, I was like, well, what happened to me? <laughs> Mom goes, well, duh, you were with us, because why would I leave a nine month in a baby carriage and us go on a ride? So we clung to each other, we took care of each other. And that's um, how this message of Naomi and Ruth becomes pretty popular in our story and in our history of learning about loving each other. And then I think about, that was a fly. Then I think about how Naomi knew that it wasn't safe for three single women to be traveling from where they were in Moab all the way to Judah. And she's like, you need to go back. You need to go back to your family, especially in this foreign land without men around us to protect us because that's who the men were. They were the protectors of the women. And yet Naomi had decided to go back. She knew that her family and she knew in her heart that God was going to take care of her. But she just didn't know how she was going to take care of these two daughter-in-laws who don't have anybody. And so she pleaded with Orpah and she pleaded with Naomi and she was like, I love you, but go. And that's the interesting piece of this scripture in my opinion because God created both man and woman and for man and woman to cling to each other and become one God did not or at least I don't remember it in scripture tell humans what to do at the time of death Today we do what has been fairly common. A man becomes a widow, a woman becomes a widower, or vice versa. I might have had that wrong. And they live by themselves. My grandma Hartman, my grandpa Hartman, died in 1975, March of 75. I never knew him. And grandma lived by herself until she died in 2005. Why didn't she get married again? Why don't we look for someone else? And so I feel that it's difficult for Orpah to understand or Naomi to understand that maybe they should have returned to their homeland of their parents because maybe their dad could have helped them be set up and have another marriage and live life to the fullest. And that's the thing. In Naomi's day, that's what they did. When I asked my grandma when I got to be about a teenager why she never married someone else, she says, because I loved your grandpa too much. I couldn't see myself with someone else. And I said, but grandma, the vows say, till death do us part. And she just said, this is how I want to live. And she was happy with that. And that was her practice, and that's what she did. And it was the same for Naomi and Ruth and Orpah. They were going to figure out what to do as single ladies going on with life, even though Naomi didn't really know what to do besides tell Ruth, okay, you can stay, and bless Orpah on her way. That's how she loved them. Now, I would like to say every one of us have someone that we have clung to in our life or we cling to today. It's either our spouses or our best friend or our siblings, whomever it is, we cling to them because we know they love us for who we are. We don't have to be some stranger within our own bodies. They don't take us for granted, and the relationship is mutual. 
And that's what Naomi and Ruth's relationship became. It became a mutual friendship, even though Naomi was much older than Ruth. But it was one of those pieces where Naomi ended up being Ruth's parent, who helped Ruth find someone to love and marry after her first husband's death, and that was Boaz. Now, if you read the whole story, it was done in kind of a sly way. And yet, in the end, Ruth married Boaz, and all three of them were safe from harm. Some would say God had a hand in that because he protected them. Others would say, well, Naomi had a plan all along, and this is how it all played out. But let's, let's flip that scripture upside down for just a second and think about our relationship with God. Because really that's what the point of this scripture is, the relationship not so much between human and human, but a relationship with God in whom we trust. Because ultimately, every scripture we read in our Bible points to a lesson about how we can grow in our faith and know God and know Jesus and know the Holy Spirit in a deeper level than we ever have known before. Someone said to me a few weeks ago, you know, Dixie, there are some adults in the pews that may not have grown as much from the time that they had confirmation or Sunday school. And so maybe we should think about teaching from day one of Genesis. It would take me a long time to do this, so don't think I'll do this. And start teaching us like more of that confirmation level of deeper learning again. And I said, well, yeah, I guess we could do that. But I said, each one of us does our own growing and learning on our own, or I hope we do, versus just coming on a Sunday morning and hearing me preach. But again, the question is, are we growing? And maybe we are, because it's not fair for me to judge you and tell you that you're not growing in your faith. Because I'm still growing. I learn something every week when I come to worship. I learn something every week when I prepare for worship. I'm younger than most of you in these pews, and yet I have a lot to learn. But yet you look to me and say, Dixie, what does this mean? I may not always have the answer. I'm a question builder because that's how I was taught. Raise those questions and start thinking for yourself because that's going to bring your relationship with the Trinity a lot stronger for you. And I guess the point I'm trying to make is that there are times in our lives when we might have to let go of the familiar of what we know and say to God, wherever you go, God, I will go. Don't leave me behind. And that's hard. That's a really hard thing to do because we're human. We have our own agendas. And when God starts to say, well, I want you to go here, or I want you to go do this, or I want you to go, we hesitate. But wouldn't it be an awful feeling in the world if we didn't follow what God was asking us to do? To be left behind when we might see somebody else doing what God has called our friends and neighbors to do and we're sitting over here? I don't know what the answer is. I don't know where we all are in that relationship with God, but sometimes it is traumatizing to think that I could be left behind at some point in time. When we have a deep, deep relationship with God, it's felt in our whole being. People see it. People know that we walk with somebody holier than thou. 
We hear God in our dreams. We envision the places that he wants us to go and has set forth before us. And it's very similar to with his son, Jesus Christ, who walks alongside of us and who gave us those Ten Commandments and who tells us to love each other. And each time those beings are going to push us and we're going to pull and we're going to restrain and we're going to love. And yet it's that relationship building. Because all three of them, the Spirit, Jesus, and God, all want us to be in that deep relationship that Naomi and Ruth had, to be inseparable. And it takes time to develop. And yet we have that immediate possibility at our fingertips. So is it difficult? Absolutely not. Because God created us and he gives us those signs. He gives us the push. And he says, I'm here to guide you. We celebrate All Saints Sunday tomorrow on November 1st. It doesn't change. It's always November 1st. And I think about all of the saints that have gone before us, that have sat in these pews. And you can probably name several of them. The forefathers and foremothers who have sat in these pews over the years, who have clung to the idea that this church was going to be a beacon in the middle of the night, which it is when these lights are on and you're coming down the road. The saints who dreamed of being a community of faith. The saints that we give thanks to on this day to celebrate them because they understood as you do that relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are honored in these walls. And it seems like we can take that and build on it and take that great learning from Ruth and latch on to that triune God who comes up before us every day and answer that question of, will you go with me? Absolutely, God. Because where you go, I will go. There is nothing richer or greater than a life lived fully and completely with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we give thanks to his Father. Amen. And our hymn of response is for all the saints, hymn number 751.
Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I put three and four in there. Uh, that's okay. We should have probably done them, but that's okay. Couldn't figure out where we were. <laughs> you, just, you just follow the leader. <laughs> I should have been following the music is what I should have been, but that's okay. We got the point across. So for all the saints, we render as they render all things to Caesar, the things that are Caesar's, and we render to God the things that are God's. Return those things that are God's back to him and bring glory, honor, and power unto his name by giving your tithes and offerings. And we continue to thank you for bringing those offerings in Sunday morning. And if you are sending them in via our live stream, we thank you for your continued donation. And we ask you for your continued support as we go about this week. Amen. <laughs> Christ, 
who is an amazing, amazing person who came to us, who walked among us, and shared with his disciples the prayer that we come together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand, if you are able, and sing our closing hymn, 661, Be Strong in the Lord.